Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In this video we're going to be looking at a Bosch washing machine, but this video can be used for all types of washing machine that are tripping the electricity supply at the fuse board. In other words, knocking off the power for the house. There are two ways that this can occur. One is with the RCD, which is a residual current device. This is designed to protect you from earth leakage on components. Uh, an example, the most common to fail on a washing machine is the heating element. Because the actual heating element is constructed of steel and it is connected to the chassis via an earth cable, this item, if it basically leaks to earth, will trip the RCD. Another item that may cause this problem is the motor. Now, we have two types of motor. The older types have carbon brushes. The carbon brushes can fail, cause damage to the armature, which may track to earth. This is a common problem on older machines. On more modern machines, it's possible that the windings are actually going to earth, or the circuit board that controls the motor. Sometimes these circuit boards can fail, and they may have an earth wire attached to the circuit board, which will cause an RCD failure. Another common device is the electronic filter. This is normally connected to the mains cable on the machine and this basically is connected to the chassis directly and sometimes when you get hairline cracks in these or the item has failed, these can cause problems with the RCD. Now other items on a washing machine necessarily will not cause a problem with the RCD. They will actually, if they do fail, they will trip a breaker. Now, all items on a washing machine can trip a breaker if they have a direct short, but items like a washing machine pump are connected to the chassis of the machine, but they are connected via plastic housings. The motor sits at the back and only has two wires going to it, alive and neutral. There is no earth wire attached to the chassis of the machine. So if these did become faulty, normally it would be a problem with the breaker, meaning a direct short. In other words, a short between the live and neutral on the machine. Now, to test these components for earth leakage, in other words, checking them with regards to the RCD, you would normally need a mega or a pack tester to individually test each component and check the whole machine. It is possible to do some tests with a multimeter, but they will not check the earth insulation. They will only check for ohms reading or direct shorts um, on continuity. So what we're going to do with this machine is talk you through the common faults that can occur and some little hacks on things you might be able to check but all this work really should only ever be done by someone who is competent with electrics. If your fuse is also blowing in the plug you have a direct short uh, and this is a serious component failure and we need to understand what would be causing this problem before you're able to rectify the problem. Now firstly, let me explain. I have seen many videos on YouTube over the years and many engineers testing appliances in different ways. Not always all of these ways that they test appliances are safe, they do work, they are able to understand what's failing on the machine and what components to change. I am going to use my mega, uh, or sorry, my pack tester to simulate plugging the machine in at the mains, whether it passes or fails. If it fails, it would trip the RCD. If it passes, the RCD wouldn't trip. And this way we would be able to understand if the individual component is failing and what the problem is with the machine. So with the pack tester, I'm going to put the earth wire directly onto the chassis of the machine via the main connection point. And I'm going to plug the machine into the pack tester. And I'll just set this up so you can see it on the camera. 
Now I'm going to put the machine in the on position with the door shut and we're going to turn the pack tester on. It will do an initial check on the circuit for the earth which it's doing at the moment and that's worked out it's all correct. It's now doing a test on the insulation which is failing and also leakage is very high 10.5. So if we plug the washing machine into the electric supply at this moment it would trip the RCD immediately and it might trip the breaker but it would definitely trip the RCD. So I'm going to disconnect it from the tester, turn it off a second and what I'm doing now is I'm disconnecting the neutral and the live wire coming out of the mains filter or suppressor. So now all we are testing is the cable and the suppressor or the filter as they're called. So I'll plug the machine back in, turn the machine on and I'll now do a initial test. The earth is now correct and now we will test the appliance itself. This is checking the chassis of the machine, any earth leakage going to the chassis. The earth insulation is now good and the leakage to earth is only 0 0.10 and this is a pass, meaning that if this appliance was plugged into the electricity at the moment, it would not trip the electrical RCD or the breaker. The machine is safe. What we need to do now is have a look at individual components on the machine to try and find the fault with the machine. Okay, we have disconnected the front panel from the machine and the machine is set onto the original program that it was on, that hasn't changed. We have only actually disconnected the door interlock. Now the door interlock is not earthed, it's plastic and it's connected to the chassis panel via the plastic with the two retaining clips. So there is no earth on this item, exactly the same as the pump which I was explaining earlier, only two wires go to the pump, alive and neutral, and this is bolted onto the chassis via a plastic fitting. So we have the machine as is, and we'll do a quick reading on this. Nothing should have changed from the earth leakage we had before. It should be still reading 10.4, 10.5, whatever it was. The insulation has failed and we still have an earth leakage of 10.5 and we'll disconnect that, unplug it from the electricity. Now what we're going to do now is disconnect the wiring from the heater including the earth and the NTC sensor and we'll remove the wiring from the motor. So we'll just disconnect this wiring. Actually taking the earth off, of, earth off as well. And now we need to go under here and remove the wiring off the motor. Okay, the motor plug's straight forward. You just need to press the two clips down and carefully remove the motor block and we'll also remove the earth as well. Okay, we have disconnected all the wiring from the heating element and the motor and we're going to do a quick test again. Now I would expect the reading to be very close to the way we tested the filter at the top and we'll just run an initial test. Insulation is good and the earth should be yes 0 0.1 again and it's a pass this would mean the appliance was safe to use with the motor and the heater disconnected if you wanted to do that the next thing we need to do is ascertain whether the heating element is faulty or the motor is faulty now I have brought along my test rig unit for carbon brush type motors. I have two test rigs. One was designed for uh, the more modern motors which uh, do not have carbon brushes 
and this one was designed for basically motors with carbon brushes and I've got two plugs on the end of it one is for a clockwise rotation and the other is for an anti-clockwise rotation because I don't have a switcher actually built into the unit so I'm going to put the box there and we're going to connect up the clockwise rotation this means if I was testing it on the power circuit the drum would turn anti-clockwise now the earth wire that is attached to this box needs to be connected to the machine but it also needs to be connected with the chassis because we have our test earth wire that's clamped to the chassis as before so I'm going to put the connector onto the piggyback connector for the earth wire which I've got on and I'm going to connect the motor back up to earth this means now when we test this box in the on position with full ampage going through uh, we are testing the fields on the motor uh, we're also testing the earth wire that runs all the way up to the filter and we will be putting a small amount of voltage through that system to test with the pack tester now the only thing that's disconnected on this machine at the moment is the heater so we'll fire this up and now run a full test and I would expect to see if the motor's good which it looks like it is that the same reading yeah same reading appears as when we were testing the filter there are only really three components on this machine that can have earth leakage because they are the only ones connected to the chassis via the earth loop so we know the motor is good with regards earth now let me show you what this device does I'm going to connect it to the power supply with the power off and the ampage turned right down and I will connect this up and as you can see it fires up we have 240 volts to the device and what we're going to do now is turn it on and we're going to increase the wattage going through to the motor and as we get up to 16 30 watts we have got anti-clockwise rotation on the motor and that will adjust the RPM of the motor so I can actually see motors working normally I would use this only for testing motors before I send them out to customers because sometimes I sell second-hand motors so I'm going to turn that into the off position unplug it and I will now connect up the other wire which is the anti-clockwise rotation and connect this back up to the power supply again and now I would expect to see the drum turn clockwise it's turning the power back on three hundred watts five hundred watts which is uh, flat out power because that's the size of the motor or the test unit just let this stop a second disconnect it from the electricity okay the last thing we need to test is the heating element and as I've checked the two other components which is the electronic filter and the motor and I know that they do not have a major earth fault we are going to do a test on the element and again I'm going to use the existing wiring from the machine connect up my jump wire onto the earth and then connect this to the element because this makes the machine uh, read through the chassis I'm going to connect up the live and the neutral and now I'm just going to be testing the element on its own and just turn this on and we'll do an initial test we've got a different earth count slightly the insulation has failed and there is our problem 
the element is what is leaking to earth. We've got 10.5 and that's a fail. We now know that this element is the problem with the machine. Okay, to take the element out is very straightforward. I'll just quickly do this. It's a 10 mil nut on this, these Boshes. You need to back the nut all the way to the end of the threads and then give it a tap inwards. This one's quite stiff. I might even have to use a hammer on that one. This one's quite hard so I'm just going to put the centre punch in the middle and give it a couple of taps and as you saw it went inwards. This is actually uh, opening up the gap between the seal and the element and that is quite solid in there so I need a screwdriver to prise that apart. I've just got to get the screwdriver behind Sometimes these are quite difficult to get out. And here, if we look closely, you can see the burning on the element and the calcification that has taken place all around this element. That element has clearly blown and this is the cause of the problem why it's going to earth. And we just need to replace that element with either a new one or possibly I have one of my used elements out of old machines. Pointless letting anything go to waste. Right, so I found a good element in my stores. And I'm just going to put a little bit of detergent on the element and put it round the seal before putting it in. Slot that into the locator, push the element clearly into place, now I normally say do things up to quarter of a turn but with these I would do it quite tight because it's important for the seal to expand around the drum area. Now I'll just show you this difference between the two elements. And I'll connect the earth wire. And as you can see, this is a pass, so it's below the, this is 0 0.1, so the earth insulation is good. Right, we've put the machine back together, all working perfectly again. Remember, in the description below, you can find all the links to the components I've been talking about in this video and other related videos. Thanks very much indeed for watching. And remember, if we really helped, you could always click on the bipolar beer. Thanks for watching.